Hello, it's July 5th, 2014. Today I'm going to talk about how to travel to the Kingdom of God. Now, of course, many of us have read and heard from the Bible, from Jesus' teaching, that the Kingdom of God is within. But how do you get there? How do you access it? Now that's what I'm going to show you right now. First, to be in the Kingdom of God is one thing to understand. We must first calm our ego mind, because our ego mind um, is not invited. Now the angels have never said it quite that way. That's my human being way of looking at it. When the angels talk to Marina and I, they prefer that we are within their temple, their kingdom of God, they call it the temple, of where they all are. Because they know when we're there, then we're not being dictated by the lower ego. So first we must put ourselves in a state of peace. And it's, you'll have to do very quickly here, and this is not a, a long process where you're just focusing on peace or focusing on forgiveness. This is going to be instant. Instantly put yourself in peace. Instantly forgive all that's around you. Now, take the breath of source. What is the breath of source? The breath of source is having the faith and the knowing that all around you and everywhere is source. So the air that you're breathing is source. But why, didn't, why don't we always take the breath of source then? Why do we have to think about it? It's intention. The intention of what you do in your life is what really matters. Even with your belief system. It doesn't matter that everybody on earth has a slightly different belief system and some vastly different from others. It matters your intention. You intend on being on the path of enlightenment. Do you intend to do good? Do you intend to give to others? Do you intend on respecting and loving yourself? See, these are things that matter. It doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, a Buddhist, Christian or, or any new age a Sikh it really doesn't matter every being from every religion every sect has the kingdom and God with, within them Jesus told us that he assisted and was there in the building of every single house of God, whether it be a church, a mosque, a synagogue, a temple on earth. Because he's that Christ. That Christ consciousness that's within us. So now let's go back to reaching the kingdom of God. With your intention, close your eyes and take the breath of source. Take the breath of love, if you will. Take the breath of ultraviolet light or pink light, if you will. However you want to imagine what source is to you. Take the breath of the body, ethereal essence of a master like Jesus Christ or Buddha. Take that breath of source. It's really up to you. It's your intention of bringing the source essence into your body. So that's the first thing we do. 
The second thing we do is we ground ourselves with what we call the iron core crystal of the earth. Hey, wait a second. Didn't they say that hell is down there? Well, they also said recently in the English, in England, the church there, that there is no hell. Well, because they're unfolding things slowly. Because there is no hell. And what's in the earth is of greater consciousness than we are. And what's in the core of the earth is the true light of God. You see, we have a pineal gland. And that is our true light of God. The pineal gland of the earth is the crystal core, the iron core crystal. That is the light of God. So what you want to do is you want to ground yourself with that core, that crystal core out there. And you could just imagine yourself. What I do is I imagine myself going to the crystal core and I always imagine that there's beautiful crystals around it. And I always put my hands on a large crystal that I can reach from one side and reach out to the left side and, and touch that crystal. And I ground myself to that crystal. And then I feel that light from that core come through me, through the ground, up through my legs or my feet, through my body, into my being, and then out through the crown chakra of my head, going through the atmosphere into space. Because that brings us to our next step. Now that you're grounded yourself with the crystal core, close your eyes and take a ride. Envision yourself following that beam of light. That beam could be an inch wide. It could be a mile wide. It could be as wide as you think it is. Bring yourself along that beam through the atmosphere into space. Now I'm talking about the space we know as the space within our Milky Way galaxy. If you want, look around. See the planets. See the ast asteroid belt. Asteroid belt. See the nebula. See whatever you see. See the stars in the distance. But you're traveling beyond light speed. You're traveling at the speed of love. The speed of consciousness which is far faster than the speed of light. And you're about to break the veil of what we call the membrane of the Milky Way galaxy. And as you do, feel yourself pierce the membrane of our galaxy, going into what we call celestial realm space. So you see, there's a little secret here. There's a difference between the space within your galaxy and the space beyond all galaxies. That space beyond all galaxies is in the celestial realms, the realms of the angels. Now, as you float, fly, or turn into light yourself, in these celestial realms. Feel yourself entering another beam of light. This one coming from a great source. And you are quickly pulled by this light into what we're going to call a temple of light. A temple of light. Now often when I come to the temple of light, I am often greeted by Yeshua ben Yosef, the one we call Jesus. I often give Jesus a hug 
or Saint Germain, a hug, or Mother Mary, Holy Spirit, a hug. Sometimes I am the light being as well. Sometimes I am this physical being in my mind's eye and this experience. Sometimes I go back and forth. Then I walk or float into the temple and I see that I am greeted by many, many, many beautiful angels, archangels, and some we, we've called the ascended masters. And know that most of them are greater than that. They show us a beautiful light, a beam of light with dancing rainbow colors, a fountain, if you will, somewhat in the center of this beautiful temple. It also presents itself as almost like an altar. And then we're told that that altar of light is the source of Holy Spirit. It's the great source of light. Not that it's contained, and that's all there is, because it's everything. And it's also every angel, and it's ourselves. And it's the beings that are on this planet, and it is this planet. But at this time, it's how it is presenting our, itself to you. Give devotion to this beautiful Holy Spirit, this source of love and light, this fountain of color, white light and color. In whatever way you choose, there is no right way. There is no right way. Now, folks, it took us 12 minutes of me talking about it, and I've done this in as much as probably 40 seconds, because you are now in the kingdom of God. You're walking amongst the source, amongst the great beings, the angels, the Christ, amongst other great beings who is also the source directly Huan Yin and Isis and you are also walking among the Christ beings who have come to this earth as Christ of course Jesus and Horus and Ira and Adam You are walking amongst, of course, the great birth of the great mother of all, the source. But you're also walking with the great mother of creation. Who came to play the part in the life of Jesus as Mary the Magdalena. Magdalena. Mag. Magi. Magician refers to that as a wizard, refers to that as a person of wisdom, high wisdom. For this is who Mary the Magdalena truly was in this life, a person of extreme high wisdom. Jesus the Christ, number one disciple, the one he shared the most of the secret information that others did not yet have eyes to see and ears to hear. You are walking with the archangels now, or floating with them. Feel their love. I mean everyone's love. Feel their love. They are not looking upon you in any judgment at all. They are looking upon you as a great hero. They are looking upon you with great and beautiful love, with great respect, 
They are honoring you. And you may honor them. Whenever we leave this temple, we like to show gratitude to these great angels and say thank you in any way that you like. Whatever comes to your mind. When you enter the temple, they are already showing gratitude. Now believe me, I understand that as we've talked in the awareness that we're all in the temple, that we still have to quiet the ego mind. The ego mind tries to interfere with this beautiful happening. It tries to say, no, 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 no. I don't want you to go there. That's not good for me. I'm in control here. No, you better think about your money situation. Think about those problems you had the other day. Think about what you're going to do. What are you going to do now? This, this is the ego mind. It wants to sabotage this experience. Just bless your ego mind. Say everything is good. Be in peace. And go back to your experience. They haven't left you. They don't look at you for the worse because you're wavering between worlds. We all do that when we first start this process. I still do that. Do you know, folks, I have days when I go into meditation and I am in the purity. I have days where I just can't seem to, to get it. My mind is racing. And then I have to focus on peace and quieting my ego mind. Then I realize, well, what did I do lately to put myself out of balance? Maybe I was focusing on this too much. Meditation, spiritual work. Maybe I was focusing on making money too much. Maybe I was just doing nothing too much. You see, we just have to balance everything. The secret is being in balance. And that means balancing. Not just saying, oh yeah, I'm in balance, man. Wow, this is cool. It's taking a real look at your life and everything you do and appropriating a balanced amount of time for the major things that you do. And once you've taken care of your responsibilities and your own well-being, to make sure you've left a balanced amount of time for fun, for enjoyment. Because if you're not enjoying the experience of life, then we're not getting it, are we? See, the ultimate goal is to take the slices of the pie we call the balance wheel, and when we walk the path of enlightenment, is to then combine them all. When we walk the path of the Holy One, the Buddha, the Christ, that every second we have balanced the balance wheel. Every second we are in joy. Every second we are giving of service to the world. Every second we are in the kingdom of heaven and we are on this earth. Every second, we are nurturing our bodies. Every second, we are enjoying our relationships. And if needed, every second, taking care of our financial well-being. Well, that's the goal, folks. But now we must divide them and make sure the parts of the whole are taken care of. That doesn't mean, okay, I'm going to spend four hours a day having fun, yay! And do nothing else. No, it might mean, well, let me take 20 minutes here with my family and have fun. Let me take a half hour here and 
um, play my guitar and have fun. Let me, you know, do this and, you know, go watch a really good movie with my family and have fun another time of the day. You know, so at the end of the day, you add it all up and you have equal time of fun. This is what feeds your fullness of your body. It gives you balance so that your ego mind will not have control. When you're out of balance, your ego mind is what's in control and it's really hard to meditate. It's really hard to do, to go to the kingdom of God. So I know what it's like. I'm like a statically hologram with bad reception. So that they're seeing me going in and out. Static image of myself. When I'm out of balance. I know it. When I'm in balance, I have reached the point where I am the beauty of light. A beautiful light being with them. And when I'm that light being, sometimes I walk right into that of the Holy Spirit, the Source, and blend into that oneness of Holy Spirit. And what an experience that is. Because you go back in our state of hearingness to being who you truly are. The Holy Spirit. You are the Source. You are that that you're looking at that you're looking at it is an illusion and when you walk into it and you blend with it and you feel nothing but quietness, stillness, peace, love and wonder and joy then you truly know know that you are eternal life and eternal bliss now you know your goal. For that is the true altar in the kingdom of heaven we call the temple of light. Which is all within yourself. When you travel through space, that space is within yourself. Because you are the universe. I know this is hard to grasp. This universe is a cell in your body. Your galaxy is your cell in your body. That computer, that desk, is a cell in your body. Your cell phone is a cell in your body. It's all an illusion, everybody. A very good one. Because it feels so real. Then it hurts. Hit that cell phone to your head. It hurts. It's real. It feels so real. But at the highest level, it is but an illusion. Practice going to the kingdom of heaven. Build your temple of light. Every temple of light is different. Who do you see? Who greets you? Buddha? Archangel Michael? Hilarion? Saint Germain? Jesus? Forget about what religions they created or, or what man did with them after they told their story and they had their life on planet Earth. Forget about all that. Zoroaster. You know what? They're there together. <laughs> and they all experience the oneness together. And the truth and the knowledge and the wisdom that they bestow upon us, that they give to us, is the same. Because when they speak through Marina or, or the Oracle, they speak often as a group consciousness, all in agreement for what they're sharing to planet Earth. Bring down the walls of religions 
that were built up by man through force, through pain, through war, through killing, through torture, through arrest, through persecution. Love each religion and take from each what you know is to be true. If you're listening to this, maybe you have, you vibrate to Buddhist beliefs. But then you realize it's a Christ consciousness that you must achieve. That doesn't mean to turn to a Christian. Or you're a Christian and you realize, hey, wait a second, this is all about reincarnation. It's real. Well, then you have to take on some Hindu or Buddhist beliefs, right? If you want to call it that. The Buddhists believe in right living. The Christians believe in good living, but they also believe in, well, do what you want and confess it to some guy in a little box. Meanwhile, who knows if that guy is pure? We've heard about the sexual um, abuses that have gone on by priests and others in the church. And I have met some beautiful priests who really are devoted to service of God and service of people. In fact, I had one in my family. A beautiful man. Basically, just let down the walls. Forgive the priest that overstepped. Forgive all. Forgive the members of the church that persecuted. Forgive all. Let down the walls and let the truth unite. Embrace the Buddhist. The Buddhist embrace the Christian. Embrace the Muslim. Embrace the Hindu. Embrace the Sikh. Embrace the Rastafarian. Because they had it right. One love, man. Iri. Iri, mom. Be in peace. Let's get together, and it will be all right. Bob Marley knew what he was talking about, and the Rastafarian religion contains many truths. As does the Sikh religion. As does the Mormon religion. As does the Christian science religion. They focus on the healing, the healing powers of the Holy Spirit. The Mormon religion, well, they knew that Jesus Christ appeared on, um, in this, country, this area like where I live, America. And they knew he came in kind of a beam of light. Well, that's what he told us, folks. He traveled in shimmering light, and he appeared in, in the Americas. They knew this, the Mormon religion. Joseph Smith got this, obtained this information. And they knew that it all began 600 years before the birth of Christ. And Jesus told us, and Mary told us, that it began 600 years before the birth of Christ, when they birthed people into the community of the Essenes and created a community that would receive not only the Christ, but also the Holy Spirit and the embodiment of Saint Germain in the being known as Joseph and all the great beings that would come into that lifetime, like Mary Magdalene, St. Peter, St. Paul, and others. You see, folks, there's truth everywhere. Now build your truth. I'm giving you Lots of information, sacred information in these discourses. I'm spilling the beans, if you will. I'm giving you the information that is going into 
the book that I'm writing called Heaven on Earth, Volume 1 of Life Versions. This is how I write a book. This is how I wrote my last book, except I didn't release the, the discourses. They told me not to. But now I've decided to release this information to you. Because I know who you are. You're just a handful. There seems to be about now about 70 of you. It was about 50 now, it was about 70 of you that listen to almost, you know, most of these discourses. It's mostly you who I share this with. I don't put this out there thinking, oh, I'm putting it out to humanity or everybody's going to hear it. No. Because I know what it's like. Now, if I was putting out a funny cat video or a video on how to do your makeup, then I know I would get a million or so views. Or if I put a video out of somebody losing their bathing suit, man or woman, diving into the pool, well, then I would know I would be getting a million plus views. No, but I'm not doing that. I'm putting out the sacred truth. <laughs> the sacred holy truth coming from the Holy Spirit and the highest beings in existence. And that's why I'm happy with just 50 of you listening. And I'm ecstatic that there may be 70 and occasionally 200 people listening to these discourses. And we're really ecstatic, a video that I put together with my wife, Marina, and her beautiful healing artwork, which we call the Healing Art Gallery by Marina Nicole Kelly. Because that's received over 61,000 views. And we're very happy about that, that we can give that service to humanity. And I plan to make another with her, her beautiful artwork, her healing artwork. So folks, I wish you a beautiful experience in the love and the peace and the harmony and the blessings and the greetings of being in the kingdom of God. I am Kevin Peter Kelly, and I wish you a beautiful, peaceful day.